The client with a head injury is having problems with several sensory functions. The nurse should understand that the structure that acts as a relay center for sensory impulses is options thalamus, cerebellum, hypothalamus, medulloblongata. Answer thalamus. Thalamus acts as a relay center for sensory impulses. Cerebellum function is balance and coordination mainly. Hypothalamus main function temperature regulation and uh, middle oblongata center for uh, um, respiration, respiratory center mainly middle oblongata and pons. Hmm. Now, this uh, relay center attack is thalamus. Ana. So, answer thalamus. Which clinical indicator does the nurse identify when assessing a client with hemiplegia? Options, paralysis of both lower extremities, paralysis of one side of the body, paralysis of both lower extremities, paralysis of upper and lower extremities. Answer, paralysis of one side of the body. Hemiplegia, it is a paralysis of one side of the body. Paralysis means it is a weakness of a weakness and mainly. Then paraplegia, Anna, it is the paralysis of lower, both lower extremities, no, Anna, paraplegia, Anna, and the lower trunk. Okay, so, I am going to answer paralysis of one side of the body, that is hemiplegia, paralysis of one side of the body is hemiplegia, okay. A client has a long leg cast. What instruction should the nurse give the client in preparation for crutch walking? Use the trapeze to strengthen the biceps. Keep the affected limb in extension and abduction. Sit up straight in a chair to develop the back muscles. Do exercises in bed to strengthen the upper extremities. Answer. Do exercises in bed to strengthen the upper extremities. Crutch walking in a and mainly upper extremity strengthening exercise ana nammal cheyendathu because nammal upper extremities kondana aa oru aa oru namaku walk cheyanayittulla oru force kudukunnathu upper extremities ana avada help cheyendathu so upper extremity strengthening exercise ana nammal main aayitt use cheyendathu allengil nammal cheyendathu for before crutch walking so we have to instruct the client regarding that so answer is do exercises in bed to strengthen the upper extremities the care plan for a client with paraplegia includes nursing actions to prevent the formation of urinary calculi the nurse explains to the client that the risk for urinary calculi is associated with High fluid intake, inadequate kidney function, increased intake of calcium, accelerated bone demineralization. Answer, accelerated bone demineralization. If it is prolonged inactivity, calcium that has left the bones as a response of this prolonged inactivity and enters into the blood and this may precipitate in the kidneys forming calculi. So, prolonged inactivity vedimperthikim, demineralization chances are good. So, calcium uh, kidneys deposit in the precipitate either forming calculi on down. So, here the answer is demineralization of the bones. The nurse identifies which clinical indicator of the parasympathetic dominance in a client under stress. Options, constipation, goose pimples, increased GI secretion, excess epinephrine secretion. Answer, increased GI secretions. If the parasympathetic dominance is uh, normally parasympathetic dominance is very GI secretions increase in GI mortality goodness. so diarrhea and cause in the constipation alla when a pyloraction and goose pimples other uh, epinephrine secretion is uh, a sympathetic nerve system in the action sana so if the answer a parasympathetic nerve system dominance I am bo a canicina or manifestations in the bar another increased GI secretions cause in so uh, diarrhea and cause so answer increased GI secretions. 
A client who has been immobilized for an extended period questions the need for a tilt table, which is the nurse's best response. The tilt table is used to help prevent hypertension, encourage increased activity, encourage circulation to the skin, prevent loss of calcium from long bones. Op answer, prevent loss of calcium from long bones. The tilt table helps in a movement and which prevents the uh, loss of calcium due to inactivity so the answer is prevent loss of calcium from long bones the care plan for a client with fractured hip includes nursing actions to prevent which type of contracture options flexion of the hip abduction of the hip hyperextension of the hip and fourth option, internal rotation of the hip. Answer, flexion of the hip. After a fractured hip, the muscle spasm and the client's tendency to flex the hips can lead to flexion contractures of the hip. So, here the answer is flexion of the hip. The mouth of a client is drawn over to the left. The nurse understands that this suggests injury to which cranial nerve? Left facial nerve, right facial nerve, left abducens nerve, right trigeminal nerve. Answer, left facial nerve. Mouth the side like in a code power. That's mainly facial nerve and injury very important. Facial nerve paralysis, Bell's palsy, and any other condition. So, if you left side like you go, so left facial nerve and the problem. Answer, left facial nerve. A client's leg is set in a long leg cast. Because of the long leg cast, the nurse should monitor for a client for a clinical indicator of compromised circulation, such as foul odor, swelling of the toes, drainage on the cast, increased temperature. Answer swelling of the toes. Baki moonum. Infection the signs and foul order, drainage on the cast, increased temperature are the signs of infection. Compromised circulation and circulation and then, uh, problems are very important. Construction of the blood vessels are mainly caused in the edema. So, the answer is swelling of the toes. When performing a neurological assessment of a client, the nurse identifies that the client has a dilated right pupil. The nurse understands that this suggests a problem with which cranial nerve? Options, third cranial nerve, second cranial nerve, fourth cranial nerve, seventh cranial nerve. Answer, third cranial nerve. Third cranial nerve is oculomotor nerve. That is why people's construction and dilation help.